God provides It's hard to say when there's no food to eat Or what you see feels all that life will be And will this be another year of misery for me? Good morning. It is my pleasure, as always, to come before you and bring you the Word of God. Today's um, sermon will be coming out of the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, 7th chapter, verses 12 through 15, and then we're going to drop down to verses 19 and 20. But as always, before I begin, I like to say a prayer. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for allowing us to see 2023. Lord, we know without you, this would not have been possible. We're asking that we all become a better Christ-like individual in a world that's, that's, that's dying in sin. Let our light so shine that men may see our good works and glorify you, our Father, which is in heaven. This is my prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, I say good morning. And today, like I said, we're going to be coming out of 2 Chronicles 7th chapter, verses 12 through 15. And then we will drop down to verses 19 and 20. And the, the topic is stop blaming God. Let's just stop doing that. Okay. So let's start with the reading of the scriptures, starting with verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard their prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and this is the verse we're going to focus on. Verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 15. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Verse 19. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for by my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among the nations. Now, before you can really get an understanding of this, we need to go back. You know, I like to do my background. Let's just go back to chapter six. Chapter six is when Solomon is dedicating the temple. He has completed it and now he's having a dedication feast and it is also called the longest prayer in the Bible because it goes from chapter 6, verses 12 through verses 42. Now, let's look at what Solomon is praying for. The first thing that Solomon prays for is for the throne. He says, the throne of Israel, God has kept his word thus far concerning his promise to David, his father. The king asked that his faithfulness might continue. In other words, Solomon is praying that your faithfulness to my father, David, will come down to me. And then he prays in the next four verses, 
uh, the sum of the, and substance of the entire prayer, which is basically two verbs that he's using, hear and forgive. And next Solomon requests that the Lord hear and judge oaths given and taken before the altar. Because we know that God is a righteous judge. So he's praying that in his prayer. Then he asks forgiveness for sin that might cause Israel to be defeated by her enemies. Because he knows that as long as the Lord is with them, no one can defeat them. He then prays that rain after drought that has been caused by sin. He, he prays deliverance from famine or pestilence in order that the people might learn the fear of the God. He prays that forgiveness may be seen uh, and that foreigners may see God work when they come to call on his great name. He prays for victory in battle. He prays deliverance from captivity once the people repent and confess their wickedness. And then the last four verses of chapter 6. He closes by requesting three things. He asks that his prayer be accepted. He asks for grace and joy for the priests and those that serve God. And he prayed for favor for himself, like his father David had. Solomon mentions God's uniqueness, loving kindness, transcendence, infinity, omnipresence, justice, forgiveness, omnipotence, grace and mercy. And in all these scriptures, you're going to find that the Lord's omnipotent and holiness are implied throughout every scripture that he prayed, every prayer that he requested. And that takes us to where we are right now at verse seven. Now, in, in chapter six, he said his prayer and when he dedicated the, the, the prayers to God and to sanctify the, the temple that has just been built. Now in chapter seven, we find here that after Solomon had finished the temple in his house, God appeared to him at night with promises and warning. Now, this didn't happen as soon as Solomon made that prayer because there was a seven day feast that took place after the prayer. And so we, we don't know how soon after the prayer that God showed up. But what we do know is that because that's what the scripture tells us, that God showed up and he spoke to Solomon. And he appeared to him at night with promises and warnings. That's what he tells us in, in 12 and 13. In the event that God sends drought, this is God speaking to Solomon now. He says, in the event that I send drought, locusts or pestilence on the people. So in other words, we know that God heard his prayer because those were some of the things that Solomon prayed for in his prayer. So God is saying, in the event that I do send drought or pestilence or war, he says in, in verse 14, they, that his people should humble themselves, pray, seek his face and turn from their wicked ways and then he said, then he would forgive their sins and restore them. See, he has promises and then he has warnings in, this, in these scriptures. So he's telling Solomon, this is, this is what needs to happen. And verse 14 clearly says, uh, and it's also known as the, the, the golden text of this entire book. It says, so originally addressed to the chosen nation of Islam, I'm sorry, Israel, it has rightly been applied to those nations which has been a biblical heritage. It is a sure road to restoration and revival for all times. If the conditions are met, the promises are sure to be fulfilled. If the conditions are met. See, he, he gave promises and he gave warnings. So he's saying, if you meet my conditions, then my promises will stand just the way I gave them to you. I won't waver in anything that I say or do. I will do what I said I would do. J. Barton uh, Payne comments, and, and he says this, this great verse expresses as does no other in the scripture, God's requirement for national blessings. 
national blessings, whether in Solomon's land, in Israel's, or in our own. Those who believe must forsake their sins, turn from the life that is centered in self, and yield to God's word and will. Then and only then will heaven send revival. Then and only then will heaven send revival. And then in verse 15, God is still talking. He says, now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. In other words, God is saying, my eyes are going to be open. I'm going to see how you're praying to me and my ears are going to be attent. I'm going to listen and I'm going to hear the prayers that are being sent up to me in this holy temple that you have built for me, a temple that I have blessed, a temple that I have allowed you to build. Because remember, Solomon's father, David, wanted to build the temple. And God said, no. He said, uh, your descendant, one of your descendants will build it. And that descendant was his son, Solomon. And so he's saying, I, God is saying, Solomon, I heard your prayer. Solomon, but I want you to know this. I'm going to be listening to the prayers that go up. I'm going to have my eyes going on and, and, and seeing what's going on in that temple. I am not going to miss anything. And all the promises that I have given you come with warnings. And I have given you everything that you need to set this thing in order. Remember I said earlier, stop blaming God. Anything that's going on in this world around us, it is not God's fault. If we are biblical readers, if we read the Bible, it is clear what Jesus will and won't accept. Remember, he's our, he's our intermediary between, between us and God the Father. He stands in our place to present us to the Father. So he knows what's in our heart. He knows when we're praying, if we're praying with sincerity. He knows what we're doing when, when we're doing things in the church that we ought not to be doing. He sees it. So we, we can't get anything past the true and living God. And so what God is telling Solomon, I'm going to see everything that's going on and I'm going to hear every prayer that comes up. And let me tell you, if those prayers are not sacred, I am not. I've already told you what I would do. I, you've already been warned. So if your prayers are not answered, it, it doesn't mean that God did not hear them. It's, it, it's, you have to be mindful of what you're praying for and how you're praying for it. And as a people, we have got to learn to come together, not just to say in corporate prayer, just to say we, we've come together in prayer, but we've got to come together with meaning with conviction, with, with perseverance. We, we've got to pray out the evil that's going on around us. We, we've got to stay together and pray together, not just to say we're having a prayer meeting or, or a prayer class or a prayer lesson, but so we're growing in our prayers when we're, when we're asking the Lord to do something for us or when we're asking the Lord for peace or when we're asking the Lord for a new job. We have to understand that we have to ask in sincerity. He says, you have not because you ask not. So we, we have got to understand that God is not about to not bless his children. That, that's not the God we serve. He's a God that loves. He's a God that cares. He's a God that even forgives. We just got to come to him right when we ask for forgiveness. And so though Solomon did this beautiful prayer, and though God heard it, and though God says, I have heard your prayer, I've heard everything that you're asking for. He says, I, I don't have a problem with granting what you asked for. He says, but if you don't follow the, the warnings that I have given you, if your people that you're leading don't follow the warnings that I have placed before them, then when the rain comes, let them come. When the pestilence come, let them come. 
I can call him back at any time. He says, but if you're going to start serving other gods, if you're going to deviate from my statutes and my commandments, then don't start complaining to me about what's going on in your life, in your community, in your state, in your country, in your universe. Don't, don't come to me and complain when you have not done the things that I have asked you to do. We, there is a part he's telling us that we play in all of this. And I think as believers, we have to, and I say it over and over again, we have to take a stronger stand on what's right and what's wrong. That is what is required of us. We know his statutes. We know his commandments. And so it is not for us to pick and choose what we will follow and what we won't. If you want God to hear your prayer, you must abide by his statutes and his commandments. It's a must. And so he's having this conversation with Solomon. I've heard everything that you've asked of. I've heard everything in your prayer. And I will withhold nothing from you. Except. And then we go down to verses 19 and 20. And that's what 19 and 20 says. Let's go back and reread them. 19. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, 20, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, the temple, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Verses 19 and 20 specifically warns that if the people become idolaters, God will reject the temple. He will also reject, reject false teachings in our churches of today. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so these are the warnings. He says, I'm going to do everything you ask for in your prayer. But if this stuff happens... I'm going to reject you. And we know that the temple was destroyed in 586 BC because they were worshiping idols and uh, false statues and, 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 and uh, donating children and just doing all kinds of crazy things. You know, selling in the temple, uh, cheating folks. It, it, all of that was going on. And so God is a man of his word. So he allowed the enemy to come in and destroy that beautiful temple. Because that's what he said. He said, I will pluck you up out of my land. This land that I have given you, this temple that I have given you, I will take it away from you. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then I'll take it from you. And that's exactly what he did. And so we have to understand, God doesn't make false statements. He, he doesn't just say stuff just to be saying it. What he says, he means, and he means what he says. That's why it's so important for us to study the word of God, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. We have to know it for ourselves. So let's just close this out and understand that God is just not a man that can lie. He, he just, he cannot lie. And what he requires of us is so plain. I mean, you don't need to go and get a dictionary. If there's some things you need to look up. But, but, but basic, it's like when Jesus Christ walked the earth, he used parables, something that everybody, you know, like if you were a shepherd, he'd use a parable uh, about animals. If you were a carpenter, he'd use a parable about a carpenter. If you were a king, he'd use a parable to you know, put you in that. I mean, it's like when we are breaking the bread and, and breaking the word of God, it should be so that others can understand what it is the word is saying. So because God is, is holding us, that he is putting leadership positions accountable to teach the word the way it should be taught. Not what the people want, not what somebody want to hear, but what thus says the Lord. We have to understand that this world is the way it is because we have turned our backs on God. 
So stop blaming God. Stop blaming God about what's going on all around us. We've turned our backs. And until we stand up and acknowledge that, it's not going to get any better. So when people ask what type of God would allow all of this to happen, just ask yourself, what have you allowed or what are you allowing to take place in God's house? Just ask yourself that that question. And then ask yourself, does it go against God's commandments? Is what I'm allowing going against his statutes? Are we as believers standing strong on the word of God? Ask yourself that question too. Am I standing on the word of God? Am I doing what I'm called to do as a Christian, as a believer, as a child of God? Am I giving it all that I have? And when I'm weak, am I asking for strength? Am I doing what I should be doing? Because all of us can do more, but none of us can do it all. We must come together corporately. We must start teaching the truth. We must stop listening to false prophets, false teachers, false preachers. We need to stop following man and follow God's commandments. We need to stop going on with the program and start speaking up because that's what he says. Follow my statues and my commandments. And if you don't, guess what? Guess what you're going to see? We're seeing it right now. The signs are all around us. Floods, famine, drought, mudslides, pandemics, wars, allowing children to pick which sex they want to be, buildings collapsing, mass murders, disrespect for self and others. And the list goes on and on and on and on. When you look at the news, you're like, what else can happen? What else? But to ask yourself, what role have I played in all of this? Have I found somebody young that I can mentor? Have I gotten with an older person that can't get out anymore and sit down and, and feed off of that, that elder's wisdom of the Bible? And if they don't have it, and then do I share the Bible with them? What are we doing? We have God on our side. We have the most powerful person that there is on our side. What are we afraid of? What's keeping us back from stepping out and telling the truth? What's holding us down? God says, I'm a man of promises and I keep my promises, but I'm also a man of statutes and commandments and I expect them to be obeyed. And so as believers, we have got to do a better job. We have got to do a better job. And so you have to ask yourself, when he returns, are you going to be ready? And if you're not, don't blame God. Don't blame God. God's word for God's people. And at this time, we're going to open up the doors of the church. Is there one that's ready to stop blaming God and just say, come into my life. I'm all messed up. Trust me, we all messed up, but God will fix us up and clean us up. Yes, he has more house cleaning to do in some houses than others, but he's a God that doesn't have respect for anyone. It doesn't matter if your house is just filthy. He will still come in and help you clean it up. Or if your house is clean, there's still going to be some dust in there that he needs to shuffle around and move out. So let's just come together. Will you give your life to Christ today? Will you say today, I'm going to stop blaming everybody. And I'm especially going to stop blaming God. And I'm going to give my life to him. Is there one? Is there one? Right now, you can just turn your life over to him right now.
know that. Give your life to Christ now because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Amen and amen. Now at this time, we will have the benediction. Let us bow our head in prayer. Lord, I'm asking you to keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. So Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace, my brother and sister, and always remember that there's someone that loves you more than you love yourself. God loves you, and so do I. Happy New Year. So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Ooh, watch God provide.